Operations Management Unit Number Five. So in this unit, we're gonna be talking about location and layout strategy. So the let's go into it. So first of all, location has a major impact and overall the risk and profit of the company. Why? Because in the end, uh, we are sending our products abroad, and for that reason, we need to figure out the logistics where we can distribute the product in a more effective way or where we have access to most of our markets. So in this case, like I said, um, we will have to choose different um, different strategies according by region, local, infrastructure, or cost of production. In this case, we will measure that. And also say like, ah, well, it's better to produce in uh, Indonesia because uh, labor is cheaper. Yes, fantastic, but you also have to think of um, transportation or infrastructure. Maybe if the infrastructure throughout the country doesn't make it easy to export abroad, then that's not a good option regardless it has a good uh, low cost of production. So when we think of locations, well, I didn't mean to do that. When we talk about, for example, key success factors. First of all, when we think about the country decision, we have to think of country. We look first into the pestle, into the political, environmental, social, technical, legal, and environmental factors. All those factors, I would say, which country is better? No, in this case, if there's no currency risk, infrastructure is good, politically stable, financially stable then we will go into the region. You could say like maybe a certain region where there's already similar factories, so we already can secure some resources or so. And finally, the site decision, which goes into more things, more like the rental or some local communities maybe don't want us to be there. Anyways, I mean, we have to think of different different areas to set an operation in a certain place. So again, Sometimes we can say we want the, the, the factory to be nearby this area where there's a lot of people, but the rental is too high. Maybe there's an industrial park that is too expensive, so that could increase our cost. So we have to think of all these decisions very carefully. And that's something that you're going to do in your final project where you have to think um, of a certain service or product that you're going to offer and where it would be the most act, most beneficial to set up that, that, that strategy, right? So in this case, we have the companies are relocating their manufacturing services because of shifts in demographics, technology, customer demand, etc. So in this case, for example, we can look at the case of Tesla. Tesla firstly they started in the US with their called the Giga Factory. They use a location that in terms of rental was not much. They give them benefits for constructing, etc. But then they thought of their global distribution. So for them, they aim the Chinese market. So in this case, for example, they open lately the Chinese plant. Why? Because they they understand that the demand is going to increase in the Asian market. And for them, it is a place that it is not because of cheap labor. Be careful. China is no longer just cheap labor. They are qualified labor nowadays. So they you have a lot of knowledge. You have an engineer's infrastructure. So in this case, that plant works very well to the original distribution of Tesla in Asia. Right? So in this case, we can talk about factors that affect the location decision. Also, we, we have to think of the market economics, how the market is working, international communications, travel and shipping, ease of capital flow, and difference in labor costs. We have to be very careful of the ever-changing environment because in the end, mm, here the example of Kodak, Kodak factory closed. Why? Because they were not able to understand the shifts in the current technology of digital imaging or digital uh, pictures. And in, for them, they had a massive, massive um, factory. And they had to close it because in the end they were not coping. The product were not was not coping with digital imaging. So again, there's changes. In this case, they had to think of what could be a good strategy for them in terms of location and whether they had to close that down and open somewhere else. 
we also need to think of labor productivity. And with labor productivity, we don't mean that uh, we need to uh, hire cheap labor. No, in this case, we have, for example, a uh, some of uh, some of companies manufactured, like for example, in Vietnam or in Indonesia. Uh, yeah, mostly because it's cheaper to, to, to produce in there, but they also have reliable, reliable employees. We also need to think of that, that their economy somehow, uh, the mindset, the cultural mindset of the employees is very productive. So that works well for them. On the other hand, for example, here we have uh, many companies are setting their IT operations in India. Why? Because they have uh, employees available there. No, in that market, we have a lot of Indians that are highly qualified and you have tons of them. So in this case, that works very well because in the end, it's a different productivity. It's looking more for quality. So sometimes in some places, we look for cheaper labor. In some other, we look for access to certain places or regions. In other, we look for quality. And also, we're looking for quality employees, etc. Right? When we set up the location, we also talk about tangible costs and intangible costs. The tangible cost, of course, is those financial costs that we know that we're going to incur in setting a certain operation somewhere. But we also talk about intangible costs, which could be things that we don't expect that happen. Things that, for example, if we think of corruption, it's an intangible cost. We will not calculate that we have to bribe some officers to open in a certain location or some things that perhaps... Um, maybe there's a civil war in a coffee plantation like this one of Starbucks. And in this case, those are, you have to stop the production and it's intangible cost because you are not calculating that that's going to happen, right? So when we think of locations, it is always a good strategy to do also to set up operations where there's already areas or regions that already focus on a certain thing. In this case, we talk about comparative advantage, not competitive, comparative. Comparative advantage, we're talking about regions that already are experts or specialized in something. Why? Because already there's, let's say, for example, here we have you know, the Silicon Valley. When we talk about the Silicon Valley, why you want to set your operations in there? Because there's flow of personnel in here. There's people that is available in terms of knowledge. In terms of distributing in and out the products, there's already companies doing it. You can access certain resources. You have technology transfer, etc. So that's why we do it. Uh, so there's many types of clusters, no, of many, many, many things. We can see in Northeast Asia is like, for example, in terms of technology, we can see many, many types of different uh, clusters. So now, in this case, when we choose a location, we can do the factor rating method, which is something that you're going to be doing on your assignment. In your assignment, when you are going to do the location, you have to categorize things. So here, let me put this thing here. Okay, so here, for example, we have we want to set our locations in two different places in France or in Denmark. We have those two options. So we're going to decide things that are important to open in this location. What's important for me? So, for example, labor availability and attitude. Maybe here I want to. This one for me is that I set it at 25% because for me, I want to know how many employees I have in each one of them. Maybe Denmark has lesser people than France, right? So in this case, for example, there's more people in France, so I will give a higher rate, right? People to car ratio, maybe you want to talk about the traffic. Maybe you want to talk about people getting to the location. That's important. So in this case, for example, in Denmark has a higher one. Right, this one is only five percent. This one must equivalent to hundred percent. When I add the sum of all these ones, must be equivalent to hundred percent. You know, based on uh, your company, what you want to assign, which ones are more important than others. Let's say, for example, if I want to set up a, a restaurant, 
I want to set a location for me, the traffic of people is very important, maybe 50% of it, because if there is no traffic of people, then mm, I cannot do business. So in this case, in that case, 50% is good, no? Per capita income, why? Maybe because in this case, for me, I have to pay higher salaries. So in this case, maybe I have uh, here, maybe the salaries are lower in France, so that's why it's higher. Tax structure, which country offers me better taxation. So in this case, for example, there's more benefits for friends and education and health. Lastly, why? Because maybe in here I'm looking for a high quality product. I need people that is qualified and I need people that attends work constantly. So in this case, for example, Denmark has a higher one than France, right? So in this case, what we are going to do is a weighted average. A weighted average means that we are going to multiply the this, this ones, which are this ones, multiply by the weight of the factor, and then we're going to get the result. So we multiply them. Right? Oops. We multiply them. We get the result. We add them up. And then we get the result. So in this case, for example, like I said, we are going to add them up. Okay. First multiply, result, multiply, result, multiply, result, multiply, result, add them up. And that's the result. So in this case, when I look at all the factors in France is going to be, sorry, France is going to be a better location because it has on a weighted Sorry, on a weighted average, it has a better rating than Denmark. So based on those rationales that I choose, then I will have, um, I will choose better France as my location. So in this case, uh, that's what you're going to do in your assignment. Okay. So in this case, we talk about the locational cost location cost volume analysis. So in this case, we're going to do, it's a different, different, the approach for calculating which um, which location we're going to choose. So here, for example, we're going to look, because sometimes some places look very attractive. When we think of the volume that we're going to produce, maybe if we produce higher volume, it's not as cheap as we thought. So let's look here at different, at the different types of them. So... For example, if I want to produce low volume, then here Athens is my best option. Okay. If I produce all the way until 1000 pieces in that location because of uh, the fixed uh, costs and variable costs, Athens is the best. However, if I want to increase my volume all the way to 2500, then Brussels, although in the beginning it looks more expensive, I mean, if I produce only 1,000 pieces, Brussels is not a good option. I need to go all the way until 2,500 for Brussels to be a good decision. But if I want to go for high volume, then although Lisbon on the first two, it doesn't look as the best option, then in a higher volume is a better option. So what we're saying here is that you need to understand on the long term, how much is going to be your production. Let's think that, for example, we want to focus on Greece market, on the Greek market. The green market is not sufficient. It's very small. So in this case, if I want to just produce for the Greek market, then this option is good. It's fantastic because I can just produce 1,000 units. The market is scoped and I'm not going to extend to Turkey. I'm not going to extend to, I don't know, Croatia. No, I'm just going to stay with that. However, for example, when we talk about the Lisbon, we say, okay, we are aiming at producing maybe on one, two, three years a um, 3,000 pieces because we're not going to cover only this well portugal we also gonna cover spain we're gonna also cover france and we're also gonna cover italy 
So in this case, I need a higher production over time because in the end, I'm, I, I, I need to distribute to some other to some other markets, right? To these markets. So in this case, I'm thinking of a long term. So in the long term, if I want to produce more, then Portugal is a much better option. So you see how uh, in this case that the locational cost volume, we have to think what we want to do. No, in this case, for example, maybe um, this one, well, uh, Portugal, Spain and France and Italy is a sufficient market, but this one, maybe Brussels, we're looking at the mid, mid production because maybe I am just looking at Belgium, the Benelux, no? Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg, which yes, is three markets, but they are very small markets. We're talking here that, for example, France is a much larger market. Italy is a much larger market. OK, so that's that's how we do it. Right. Good. Hopefully that's clear. If it's not clear, then ask me again. Or don't ask me. Some people don't ask me even if they have a question because they think they will look silly. No, you never look silly. Just ask me all the time. <laughs> Center of gravity method. This one we're talking just about e location. We're talking very simple, very simple thing, which is how much I'm going to cover. So in this case, oh, I better do it with this which ratio I'm covering with this one. So in this one, I'm covering this area with this one. With this hub, I'm covering this ratio. With this one, I'm gonna cover this ratio. Okay, with this location, uh, sorry. <laughs> this one, I'm gonna cover this ratio, and then with this one, I'm gonna cover this one. Okay, so in this case, we are looking at distance and how much we're going to cover in terms of distance. OK. OK. And I'm not going to exceed a certain amount of miles. Right. OK. OK. So I do a measurement mostly into distance, how much distance I'm willing to cover. Now, in this case, we are talking about the transportation model. Transportation model is a, is also somehow based on distance, but it is more in terms of transportation methods. Means maybe, for example, from this one, I can use air transportation or the lines of transportation of maybe, for example, when it comes to shipping, maybe with, from this port, I can reach this port and maybe I can reach these ports. Okay, maybe from this country, I can reach these ports, etc. So in this case, you're looking a little bit of um, assemblies. This is Volkswagen, for example, and how they do the distribution according to their plans of uh, transportation and cost and so on. So it is more of a linear transportation method. Let me delete that for you. Okay, now, and this one we're talking about different thing, which is a service location strategy. So in this case, we will do, as I told you, for example, in McDonald's or this one, let's talk about Shinsegi. So in this case, I will choose based on a couple things. Uh, I will chase, for example, the purchasing power, how much people can spend for Shinsegi. Maybe if I choose Gangnam, service and image is compatible if I want to set uh, Shinsegi in Kirim Station probably is not the right place. Competition in the area, you can say, yeah, professor, but there is no competition. Yeah, but nobody's going to go to Kirim Station to Shinsegi, right? Quality of the competition, in this case, for example, again, when we talk about the Gangnam location, when we talk about Gangnam location here, uh, I didn't want it in Korean. I'm not going to write in Korean. Don't even think about it. When think about Gangnam, we talking about the competitors will be Lotte, will be Hyundai department store, and somehow we are chasing the same market. However, we have some uniqueness of the firm. Okay, maybe as Shinsegi, I have very special products, very unique products that other competitors don't have. Also, I can think of 
the qualities of facilities on neighboring businesses. Also, if there's any shops that are very similar and that can contribute also to bring value. It could be, for example, um, also I can think of shops, people, I mean, let me rephrase this. When people is thinking of going to shop, they are going to go for a location where there's many shops as compared to go to a standalone area for shopping. Let's think about, for example, Ikea, Korea. No, I, I, well, Ikea in the Kwangmyeong, Kwangmyeong, I think is the place. Uh, yeah, well, it's Ikea there. And there is Ikea and there's also Costco. But you're talking about that people go specifically there for a certain reason, right? They have to go there for that reason. Now, we are talking about operating policies of the firm, how they want to operate, how much market. Like I said, for example, some departmental stores, they don't open in certain places if there's a population that population must be higher than 500,000 inhabitants. In my city, there isn't any of these uh, locations. Why? Because there's 300,000, I think. And then, of course, the quality of management, which is in this case, this is more internal, internal things of the company. Okay, very good. Okay, so uh, let me continue on this one. So in this case, we have location, strategy, service versus good products. We, this one is different. We have to think of tangible and intangible costs in terms of a service are different because we have to make them available for the people. When we talk about products, you can have your operation or your production very far away. And then if you can afford the transportation and logistics, then there's no problem with it. Okay. And the same thing also, it might be cheaper, the, the rental might be cheaper in the middle of nowhere, but you are looking to serve your customers, right, in a certain place, okay? Now, uh, when we think about uh, location, we also have to think about layout decisions. In this video, you can watch this video, this is very good because it shows how to make more effective the, 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 uh, how to make more effective the, the layout and transportation of the thing. Sorry, I got a bit distracted because my headset is saying that the battery is almost done. So hopefully I don't I don't end up without anything. Okay. So we also think about different layout strategies. So let's go and talk about them. So in the case we have the office layout. We have two options in here, which is the cubicle or the open space. Cubicle started by saying that we need more privacy in order to be more productive. But modern modern working theories say that it's better to enhance communication, talk to people, people feel connected rather than being enclosed in their cubicle, right? I, I don't know. I'm more inclined to, to privacy, but anyways. Then we're talking about the retail layout. Retail layout is looking mostly at, I think it's gone. Let me see. Hopefully I am not without microphone. Let me see, hold on. No, I think we're still on. So anyways, it's uh, looking to maximize profit and revenue by putting the, play, the things on the places that you most likely will, will purchase. So in this case, for example, I ask you a question, can you guess why candies are at the cashier? This is not my daughter. Maybe I can change the picture to my daughter so you can see she's the one making drama. And once you're there, there's no way to move. If you're in the middle of a supermarket, you still can find it. But if you're at the cashier, it makes a drama, you end up purchasing it and that's it. Right? Here you can watch the video to see how they maximize that. So we have the warehouse in storage layout. We have to look for options in the warehouse that we can be more effective. How can we make sure that we waste less time, resources, effort, and everything goes as quickly as we can? So in this case, uh, we're looking at strategies like, for example, the cross docking, which is uh, Avoiding the placement of materials in storage by processing them as received. We 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 are more of a pool approach, meaning that rather than storing, it comes, it processes it, it goes out. We never have anything on stock. Here you can see that, for example, in this video, how e-commerce has made difference the warehousing because we have to have a better control and technology in order to fulfill the orders. 
Okay, very good. So, in this case, for example, we have to think of fixed, fixed position layout. When we are looking to optimize operations, we think that we can always change things, but sometimes we cannot do it because maybe the factory or maybe the equipment is too heavy or has some access to some electricity, some water, some disposal. And then we need to look for different strategies to make it more effective because maybe there are some things that we cannot change. And this is more about being creative rather than changing the layout. We also have process-oriented layout, which in this case, we're talking about a low volume in high variety. This is, for example, the hospital. In the hospital, we have that. No, we have um, few patients, but they have many different processes. So what we have to do is effectively plan and schedule all the areas. That's what the hospitals do, which is try to use allocations effectively and try as much as they can to schedule the doctors in the location so that it can be more effective. So let's talk about uh, work cells. So in the work cells, we're talking about this ones. Work cells are planned to be more effective so that employees can work together. They can use all the inputs and the outputs. So in this case, in the work cells, we will measure the task time, how long they take to produce a certain unit based on the demand. Based on that, we will calculate how many workers we need. As operations manager, we need to decide these not human resources. We will only tell human resources, hire five guys that do this in this way and that do that with these skills and so on. We are the ones who calculate it. So uh, in this case, again, we are looking at, a, for example, focus work center or focus factory that have very specific production of a very specific item, right? So in this case, we're talking the machines and the personnel are arranged in a certain way so that uh, it's always produced exactly in the same time, okay? So in this case, when we have the work cells, we're talking about effectiveness. We're talking about high production, high volume communication. This comes from the Toyota principle of total quality management, the TQM, which is if there's any problems, we can fix them on the spot rather than uh, making mistakes and then waiting until the product is finished and then we correct it. No, that this, this kind of work cells help more in. We make the mistake and Quality is responsibility of absolutely everyone doing that process. Like I said, this one was started by Toyota. We have also repetitive and productive oriented layout. In this one, we look about, about fabrication line, assembly line. We're talking more about putting in, putting out, putting in, putting out. And then we're talking about the cycle time, how long it takes for like the whole engine to be produced and we're talking about whole products, how long they take to be produced and how can we enhance it. Uh, that's why we use a heuristic, which is pretty much problems solving using procedures and rules rather than mathematical optimization. So it's more based on reasoning. Uh, when we're doing this uh, repetitive product oriented layout and well actually and also in this one we're always talking also about the line balancing. So what is the line balancing? Meaning that we are going to put the employees on a certain places so that they do different things maybe at the same time, right? So we maximize the same thing that we did with PERT. We do it also in terms of positioning. The last time we talked about time management, in this case, we're talking about position management, where we're going to put employees so that this product or this process becomes more effective, okay? Very good. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, please let me know and um, stay safe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.